good. He has a, a few uh, a few different models, but that one's called the Viper. There's one called the Stingray, which I think is a great name too. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah, you can check out his website and see all the different violins. Yeah, you can e- email that to me or, or Facebook it to me and definitely look into that. I got a fr- lots of friends of mine who are fiddler players or who play the bass, and so that's pretty. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, so, it's such a you know an unusual instrument to front a band with, but I I really love it. Awesome, uh, awesome, awesome. Yes. Okay. So you also have another charity that you were are into too. Am I gonna pronounce this wrong? Now, I'm not. I don't recall which one I sent you. <laughs> which it's, one I'm are gonna, you? Um, I am so going to pronounce this wrong because it's, it's a medical name. Spider, you can eat a... Oh, my senior gravis. Is that the uh, disorder? Yeah, or dermatomyositis. So both of them I do. That's, I didn't, couldn't remember which one I emailed you. What, what letter does it start with? A. A. Uh, okay, uh, auto lemon. Oh, the... Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it is actually... This is very good. Cool that you brought this up. It's, um... Uh... It's autoimmune disorders that are uh, mixed connective tissue diseases. There's a bunch of, like lupus is an autoimmune disease. It's when your own body attacks itself and, and makes you ill because it causes inflammation. But there's many of them and they overlap and there are no names for it. You're just sick, but you don't have a name for it and doctors often dismiss you. Um, but it's um, just a all autoimmune diseases in general that don't have names. And it's it's really interesting because people are so frustrated that they don't know they're not well. And um, and doctors often don't take them seriously until you find a good one. Which I want to tell everyone out there that um, you have to keep searching for a doctor who will listen to you because people will tell you you're crazy, but um, you know your body. And if you're not well, really keep looking for the right doctor, but um, mixed connective tissue diseases or autoimmune diseases in general are just very difficult to diagnose, and a lot of them don't even have names. They just overlap. So um, before I had lupus, it was, I had several diagnoses, dermatomyositis, um, myasthenia gravis, and, you know, it just was very frustrating um, so yes, I um, try to stay involved and make people aware, um, you know, that this exists. And also, if you're afflicted with this, to hang in there and just keep being persistent about your own health. Wow, it's now, a kind of a funny thing about about how the medical field is these days. I mean, there's so much that we know and so we're so confident that we can diagnose all these different things and we're, we think we're so smart about everything and there's just so much that we really don't know about the body that that kind of flies under the radar and this is a perfect example of one of those areas. It's just like stuff that we think we know but maybe we don't. Mm-hmm. You are, yeah, you said it better than I did. That's exactly right. <laughs> And, you know, they're confused and they can run some tests, but even the test for lupus isn't, they don't even, I think it's at 50%, you know, accuracy. So, you know, you can still test negative and still have it. It's really bizarre, but you're absolutely right. They just don't know everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, for a while, thing, there we- you know. Yeah, before before right. I was diagnosed with uh, anxiety attacks, people say, "Oh, maybe you're bipolar." Like, I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they think I was bipolar, so because my moods would switch here and there, and so I was just neurotic everywhere, and I'm trying to keep myself centered, and it didn't work. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, that was interesting. So that's another area too. You're right with the mental health area mm-hmm. where they don't know that much either and um and even until recently the treatments were sort of barbaric yes Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's another one where things overlap and it's it's just difficult to diagnose but people are still suffering and they're made to think you know they're bad or they're you know that something's not right with them you know emotionally when they have a physical or chemical problem Mm. so it's 
it's it's good to just make people aware and, and also I just remember the frustration of knowing that I wasn't right and you know doctors giving me a hard time and until I had enough big markers where they could tell what I had. Yeah, totally agree with that one too. I mean, uh, we yeah. had a show back in episode 14, I think it was about, we had a, a lady who passed away with EB, and we did a dedication to show just by her her condition, and everybody with EB. So um, now that you have your condition, I'm going to call it conditions because it's easier to say, and, and mm-hmm. my condition, it makes it more easier for people to actually relate that it's not just them. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And you're that's not another good it. thing about the show here that, that we're able to when we like to talk about music, we like to have you on the show talk about yourself and stuff, but we like to hear about you having these 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 different things that, that are important to you that you know, like the autoimmune disorders and, and things like that, that they affect your life really personally. And that's that's kinda what we like to have on the show so we can tell right. people about these yeah. the show's there to to tell people hey look at this kind of stuff these people have these things going on but you can still do everything that you want to do mm-hmm. yep we don't, we don't you have to be more creative about how you do it but yeah right <laughs> you, you're not gonna That's allow true. you're not gonna allow your conditions to consume you and be part of you and drag you down yes and that's not to say there's not huge moments of frustration and despair, but yes, you oh, can definitely. move oh, trust forward, us. absolutely. Yeah, I don't know uh, how my friends stick with me for all these years. I have no <laughs> clue, but thank God that they do. <laughs> well, because you're a sweetheart, I can tell that. Oh, you are thank a you. sweetheart. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you feel better. <laughs> you tolerate <laughs> me, yay. <laughs> And also, I have to say, you are a sweetheart. I'm going to say this. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love that email. (laughs) I I felt so stupid that I hadn't figured that out. Um, We should share that on the air. Can we share that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go for it. We'll we'll share it because, oh, my God, you think (laughs) after six months, I I would actually be on top of things. And yes. Okay. So here's the thing. So. I asked Susan to come on the show like about a month before we went on vacation. And this is, this is, I'm going to talk about before we went on vacation because bless her heart. I'm telling you, I, I did not tell her how long the show was. I did not tell her what, where we are. We, I just have a specific standard time thinking she's going to click. No, some people need to actually know we're in Seattle or Tacoma or whatever. <laughs> and I did not do anything of that nature whatsoever. I told her, we're, I'm going on vacation. I cannot wait. I'm going in, 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 in grips here. And she's like, vacation's coming. Calm down. You'll be okay. <laughs> she's like, you know who I am? She's calming me down there in the email. Like, oh, my God, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Anyways, tell your side of the story. What what was going on through your head? <laughs> <laughs> well, first I didn't realize I I didn't realize that the show was four hours long, which is incredible, by the way, and takes a lot of focus um, to to do a four hour show. Um, I for some reason just assumed it was an hour show, and then um, I knew I was supposed to call in at a certain time, and um, when I called in, no one was picking up the phone. And I was panicking that I had done something wrong, and was calling and calling and emailing until it finally dawned on me as I was dialing the area code over and over that you guys weren't in New York, and you meant 8 o'clock your time. (laughs) (laughs) And it took me about 20 minutes to figure that out. Um, and embarrassingly enough, that was so easy. I'm just like, oh my god, I am like this. This is not happening. This is the first time I actually have dealt with this in, in, in forever. And I was like, okay, what am I supposed to do? I am panicking. I was like, oh my gosh, she's not gonna come on the show because it's the wrong time frame. She's gonna do this. Gonna, oh my god, are you still coming? Yes, I'm still coming. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I thought maybe I, I thought maybe you guys were like, "Where is she? Why isn't she calling?" And I, you know, and it just called way too early. 
<laughs> and then I sent you all these emails and phone messages, and then I had to apologize for that. It's just a crazy yes, bunch of and, events. All and you leave a left a very lovely voice message, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, and it's lucky because when you email me, my I just got a new cell phone today because my old one crapped out on me. And so I came up here to charge it, and I looked at it, and like, oh my god, really? Okay, okay I'm trying to figure out this new phone, so I'm trying to message, text you with, and stumbling everywhere because of the new phone. Oh yeah, it's been one of those days. Wow. I will ship you chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a deal to oh. me. But I hate getting new phones and having to relearn where everything is. Oh, well, yeah, th- this phone is a little bit different because it, it it's, this phone has a section for just data and just like it, I'm able to I can able to figure how long I wa- worked, I walked and just by exercising for me just like what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> But I like it one thing because they just show the calendar when when things are popping up because that is a good thing. It show me I had to be on the air at eight o'clock tonight, so it was great. I'm sure you don't need to be reminded. No, but I don't. It's good. No, no, I don't. But it was great that it's there. You know, in case I have a relapse. <laughs> well, speaking of reminders, we actually yeah. have a segment that we're going to come up to, and this is my cue to put in that segment. Yes. So if you ladies All are right. ready, this is a part of the show where we like to talk about history. This is This Day in Music. Mm-hmm. And I've got a couple of points here that I'm going to bring up. And these are these are going along with the show here a little bit. Um, first one, on this day in 1990, Wilson Phillips went to number one in really? the U.S. with Hold On. Mm-hmm. Huge oh, that song. Oh, song. I love that song. Yep, huge song. It still gets a lot of radio play, I think. Mm-hmm, I it does. Um, but yeah, uh, and they still play sometimes, I think, actually. Um, I don't Did remember they, the last you time. You know, I, I remember did. that music video. I remember seeing mm-hmm. them for the first time on that music video mm-hmm. for that song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, one other one that's a good one for today is uh, After an Argument. The singer from TLC, Left Eye, set fire to her boyfriend's Atlanta mansion no. with $2 million. I remember that. <laughs> and burned it to the ground. I remember that. <laughs> she was charged with arson and fined $10,000 with five years probation. So that's another wow. interesting thing that happened in musical history today. <laughs> wow. Does it say what year that happened in? That was 1994. Yes. Wow. I remember that. Oh my god! I was just in, I just graduated high school a year before that. Oh my god! <laughs> I was DJing. So a, I was DJing at a place called the Java Shop in 1994. Crazy. <laughs> wow, you remember that? <laughs> you remember yes. Where you were? Yes. <laughs> it's just not there anymore, by the way. The club is completely bulged over, but yeah, I remember that place. Wait, what are you going to say, Spider? <laughs> well, those were... I was looking through the list, and those are the only two points, really, that involve women today, which is kind of disappointing. I was hoping to get a whole bunch of good facts to go along with our with our women of, of music topic wow. for today, but it well, doesn't look I... like this. Oh, wait, wait, there's one more. Oh, one oh, more. Oh. One more. In 1984 today... Cindy Lauper started a two-week run at number one on the U.S. singles chart with Time After Time. Oh, I love the song, too. See? Wow. Another good song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Cindy Lauper, she went country. That's I know. Cool. I was so surprised. But see, I put her in a box. I hate when people do that to me, and I did the same thing with her, but yeah. Well, what's his face? Uh, <laughs> Tyler Moore. Tyler Moore. Um, Errol Smith also went country. Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, right. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty crazy. Okay, so yeah, it's I gotta, interesting. Yes. Okay, hold that thought, Spider. <laughs> hold it. Because we got it's, it's the top the of the tight. hour. The and I have to take a small break. We'll be sponsors. right back. Yes, more sponsors. 
So it's actually more actually is 